Okay. All right, so welcome to our April team call. Um, I know that we had, I just checked, we had 27 RSVPs, so I assume that people will be popping on as we keep going. Um, if you are in Jen Richardson's downline as well, I know that he did a similar call to this for Jen, but I know he's switching things up a little bit, so be sure to pay attention because you will, um, I assume, take more, you know, every time you hear this stuff, you're gonna take more and more and more out of it. Um, I believe, Brad, are you still a coach? No? No, I'm not. Okay, so Brad is a former Beachbody coach who dove all in to um, this new academy, academy, appreciation academy that he's running um, and is helping tons and tons of coaches really grow their business. And because he knows our business and understands kind of the obstacles that stand in our way that are right here and not on your keyboard. Um, he's gonna teach us how to overcome this. Is that like a fair assessment of what you do? Absolutely. Okay, all right, so, and he's really excited. Okay, sometimes I think I'm excited and then I'm like, oh, I'm not excited at all. Okay, so now I'm even more excited. So I'm gonna let you take it away. Awesome, guys, can you hear me? Is that coming through? Give me a thumbs up. What is going on, everyone? I am so excited to be here. Um, this is just such a privilege and an honor for me to speak to you guys. I'm just so grateful for it. And, uh, and just like we were talking about, um, I was a Beachbody coach for five years, built a five-star business. I love everything about Beachbody. It led me to my true purpose in life, which is helping people master this master their noggin, master what's going on up here so they can feel fully alive every single day and help more people in their life, right? That's what we really wanna do. So, um, so I want you to know that I will not betray your trust over this next hour. I know this, this time is something you cannot get back. And so my goal tonight is just to bring above and beyond value to help you master any of the negative self-talk that's getting in the way of you becoming the person you're meant to be. So as we get rocking and rolling, put the phones on silent. If you wanna take the picture for Instagram stories now, do it now, post it later. Put the kids in a closet, whatever you have to do, just be present here. And I promise you, especially on Whitney's birthday, I will over deliver with the value. So let's start with some participation, friends. What's a really big goal you have for 2019? Type that into the chat box right now. What's a really big goal you have for 2019? And as you're typing that in, realize something really cool. There's a recipe to making it happen. There is a way to do it. Someone has gone before you and achieved this. Pay off six figures of your house. Fantastic. That's amazing, right? Incredible goals. There, there's ways to do this. People that have gone before you and achieved these things, right? So there's a recipe. But something you might miss and that most people do miss is that the way you go about using your ingredients in that recipe is what matters. So just like Jillian mentioned, like it's not what you type out in the message. It's how you think, right? That's what we're going to talk about. So what does that mean? That means that you could, you could like sign up and set your big goals for 2019. But if your mindset's off, they're actually going to be goals based out of fear instead of a goal based out of who you want to become. You could invite a billion people to your challenge groups, but if your mindset's off, they're going to, they're, you're going to repel them. You could have the best training for your team in the world, but if your mindset's off, you're going to feel like you're forcing everything. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like it's the way you think. So what goes on in your mind, your self-talk, your mindset is by far and above the most important piece of all of this. And you've heard that before. Raise your hand if you've heard the cliche, change your thinking, change your life. How many of you guys have heard that cliche before? Awesome. Me too, right? But how the heck do you do that? Like how the heck do you change your thinking? That's what I'm here to tell you today. I'm going to show you how, you know how when sometimes negative self-talk shows up, it can be a week or two before we're fully back on track and we kind of get into a slump, we get inconsistent even though we don't want to. You ever notice that? This call is going to show you how to shrink that amount of time into just a couple of minutes so you're not dominated by it anymore. So where does negative self-talk come from? Where do limiting beliefs come from? I'm going to share with you a couple stories about my past. And the reason I share these with you is just to share what I went through so you can see what my limiting beliefs were and how I turned them around. And you might have a totally different story. That's okay. So, and guys, if you can make sure your line is muted, that'd be super duper helpful. Um, but I want to start just at the very beginning 
of growing up, right? I, I had a, an emotionally challenging, like a roller coaster of a childhood. And it gave me really screwed up beliefs about how life is. And I'm curious, type yes, if you can relate to the topic of money stress, whether past or present at any point in your life, money stress. That was something that was a huge, huge, huge factor in my life. I remember there was always a limitation around money, some form of we can't afford that. And there were scream, screaming matches every single day. And I didn't know why. And I remember one time, and that's not an exaggeration, by the way, there were screaming, screaming matches every day. And I remember one time I was a little kid during a screaming match going up to my mom being like, mommy, why do you guys have to fight about stupid money? And excuse my language, I'm just doing it for the effect of the story. In that moment, and any time I would come up to her and, and ask her about this, it was automatically, shut the fuck up and get away from me. Like that's, that's how I was talked to as a kid on a regular basis. And so that's a whole other topic. But in that moment, from my, like that language, my dad came over with a soap dispenser and starts pouring soap all over my mom, on her head, on her back, like down her neck. And so in that moment, I remember thinking to myself, did money cause this? Is it because of money that my parents are fighting? And I would watch my dad work 100 hour weeks, 90 hour weeks, barely get by. And so I thought that money was horrible. It rips relationships apart. And you have to work really hard to barely have anything. That's what I thought money was. And so you can imagine when I started my Beachbody business seven years ago, it didn't matter how many like people I invited, right? I, I wanted the big dreams. I wanted the five star. I wanted the 10 star. I wanted all these things, but money is bad. Do you see how that might slow me down in some way where I want to sprint hundred miles an hour in one direction with chains around my ankles? That's how I was living. And so I believe money was bad. I believed it tore relationships apart. And, and on top of that, I had a really turbulent relationship with my mom and I love my mom. I've had to forgive her for all the things that we went through in the past lover, right? We're building a great relationship now, but getting to that point took some time because I was really angry and I was really sad. So type yes, if you can relate to a turbulent relationship with a family member in some way, whether past or present, that's what I went through with my mom. And that's a whole other topic of how I reversed it. In fact, I'll teach you in my program how I did it. But I remember with my mom, it was always like walking on eggshells around her. I never knew what I had to do to be worthy of her love, right? It, I never knew what version of her I was gonna get. I remember like most of the time it was a, why are you talking to me or go away? Why are you here right now? That was the vibe of my childhood and it sucked, right? So I grew up never knowing or never feeling like I was worthy enough for love. Like that's how I grew up. And so I remember like it changed how I lived my entire life. I would always seek validation from other people. It was, I never felt like I was enough for my big dreams. So when I started my Beachbody business, I wanted the big things. I wanted to make mass impact, but it, I had these limiting beliefs of I'm not enough. How many of you feel like you're not enough in some way, shape or form for something, someone, some person, love, whatever it is, a business, anything. That's what I had to break through. And you might have a totally different story. That's okay. But where can you relate? What limiting belief or beliefs do you have now? Because it's something that happened years and years ago or a past failure that you haven't changed the meaning of yet. Because when you go through failure or trauma, what it does is it forms beliefs about yourself, especially emotional stuff. And that's how you live the rest of your life. So when I started my business seven years ago, it didn't matter how many people I invited. It didn't matter how many social media posts I put up. It didn't matter how many team calls I, I created for my team. It was, I just always felt stuck. How many of you feel stuck in some way, shape, or form in your business, your life, anything? And by the way, sorry about the raspy voice. I'm fighting a cold right now, so bear with me on that. So I just felt stuck. And on top of that, I was always overdrafting my bank account. My paychecks were, I was barely skating by. And I remember just seeing that red font on chase.com that said overdrafted by 49 cents. And something clicked in me where I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. And I took out credit cards. I borrowed money. I would like ask my, my parents, right? Like anything I could to invest in personal growth because all my mentors were saying, if you want to achieve more, you have to become more. And so, and guys, can you please make sure your line is muted? Um, just so I make sure I'm not getting any feedback noise here. That'd be super, super helpful. Um, and so I invested tens of thousands of dollars into my personal growth, investing in programs, courses, hundreds of hours into seminars, all this stuff. 
And it led me to figuring out what was going on. It led me to the creation of my business and who I was meant to be. It led me to helping people master this stuff. And so the reason I tell you that is because when I tried to build a business, the overwhelming amount of negative self-talk and a lack of belief in the secret obstacles that I didn't even realize were there stopped me in my tracks. So we can't go over the whole <coughs> thing how to overcome that in one hour. But if you take this really seriously, you're going to learn three of the major steps that I took to exploding my life. So number one, write this down. Your thoughts are always the reason. Your thoughts are, I think it's a Gigi that's unmuted, by the way, guys. Your thoughts are always the reason. The first thing you can do is change the way you think. And you've heard that before, right? You've heard change your thinking, change your life. But I'm talking about rewiring the way you naturally respond to situations. So let's backtrack. You start to tell yourself stories, right? Money is bad. Building a team is hard. My teammates won't do anything. It's so much easier for my upline. And what happens when you say that enough times? You start to believe it. Have you ever noticed that whatever you repeat to yourself consistently, you will believe whether it's true or not? That's how belief works. So what I used to do is I used to be at parties over the years with my friends and I would exaggerate stories to sound cooler than I actually was and I'd get more laughs. So the next time I went back, I would exaggerate a story again and then I would find myself five years into the future making up this BS story and not knowing what part of it is true or not anymore. You know what I'm talking about or am I crazy? That's what happens with beliefs, right? We say stuff enough times that we believe it even if it's not real in actuality. The same thing happens with negative self-talk, only it, instead of it being a fun party topic, it will sabotage your life. And this is de our default software. And we'll go through life believing this. It creates inner conflict. It changes the way we lead our life and our business. It causes us to feel like we're forcing things all the time. It causes us to feel stuck. And I remember thinking to myself, even though I was hitting success club, nothing was happening. And so how do you break through this? To change this, you have to believe that you're enough before the evidence of your business will ever say that you're enough. It's so important that you understand that. You have to believe you're a great leader before your business is ever going to grow. You have to believe that you're worthy of money coming into the bank before you're ever going to have income pouring in. And that's really hard to do when the evidence of your life and your business is saying otherwise, right? So how do you do it? You can change these beliefs by changing your questions. So write this in your notes. Better questions will change your entire life. Better questions will eliminate negative self-talk. Better questions will explode your business. Guys, can you please make sure your line is muted? Thank you very much. If you've ever faced a point in your life where you're trying to convince yourself that you're good enough or that you deserve something great, but you don't actually believe it, there's a reason. Like, have you ever done a goal-setting workshop or a vision board and you're looking at the debt-free sign, the five-star diamond, all that stuff? And it would be so incredible. It would change everything for you. Everything would be different, but there's like that little voice that's saying, you're never going to do that. You know what I'm talking about? Like it would change your entire life, but there's a piece, a piece of you that says you're never going to achieve it. So that's what we need to break through. And we can't break through all of it in one hour, but here's a great tool to do it. So first, what is thinking? Thinking is nothing more than the process of asking yourself a question, right? That's what thinking is. And if you ask yourself bad questions, you get really bad answers. An example of that would be, why is it so hard for me? Why am I so broke? Why am I so fat? Why am I not enough? Why can't I do this? Those are bad questions. They lead to bad answers. A great question would be, why am I worthy of greatness? Why can't I do this? Why am I successful? Why am I grateful? Those would be great questions. The mistake I made is I thought I just had to keep hitting success club. And yes, you do. You have to keep hitting success club. Absolutely, that's your benchmark for your business. But there comes a point where either A, every time you try it doesn't work, B, you hit it inconsistently, or C, even if you do hit it, nothing's happening and you start to wonder what's going on. So let's backtrack a little more and I'll show you what I mean. If you were on Jen Richardson's call, don't cheat with this exercise. Look around the room you're in right now and I want you to count the number of things you can find that are red. Ready, go. Count the number of things that you can find that are red. Ready, go. Look for red, look for red, look for red. Look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Keep looking for red, look for red, look for red, look for red. Look for red, 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 look for red. Cool. Hold up your hands. How many things did you find that were red? We got 10. We got 10 from Alicia. We got five from Nicole. Awesome, Jennifer. Fantastic. We got one from Jillian. Awesome. Cool. That's great, guys. But question, how many things did you find that were blue? No idea. Why? 
because you weren't looking for blue. But check this out. Look around the room you're in right now and count the number of things you can find that are blue. Ready, go. Look for that beach body blue. Look for blue, look for blue, look for blue. Look for blue, look for blue, look for blue, look for blue, look for blue. Keep looking for blue, look for blue, look for blue, look for blue, look for blue. Holy cow, how many more things did you find that were blue? Hold up your hands, how many more? And how many of you even saw green and pretended it was blue just so you would feel successful at this exercise? You know who you are. I did it too the first time I did this. So my point in this is that when you focus on what you don't want or red, that's doubt, that's skepticism, that's pain. Those thoughts will grow in your mind like weeds. What does that mean? Well, remember Jim Rohn's quote that says, stand guard at the gates of your mind or weeds will grow automatically. What does that mean? That means that unless you condition your mind to focus on blue, what you want your dream, you're automatically going to find red. And when you look for red, what do you not notice? Blue, right? And so how does this apply to your life right here? Well, when it comes to like these, these weeds in your mind, if you're being negative, you're never going to have your biggest goals, right? So try this right now. And by the way, why does your brain do this? Because your brain doesn't care if you achieve your goals. Your brain doesn't care if you're happy. Your brain doesn't care if you hit five star, hit elite, whatever it is, pay off your mortgage. It doesn't, your brain doesn't care. Your brain's only job is to make sure you survive. That's your brain's primary function. If you touch a hot stove, what happens? Your brain says, pull it away, right? Your brain is a survival mechanism. So at any moment in time, it's looking to protect you from pain. That's what your brain's doing. So when you think of a big goal, like elite or five star, and you're going, I really want that. Your brain's going, shouldn't you be more realistic? Why don't you go for diamond instead? That could mean rejection. That could mean failure. People might make fun of you, right? That's what your brain's going to do. So if you're ever mean to yourself on a regular basis, it's your brain doing its job. That's what your, your brain's literally doing its job. So it's going to be okay. So try this right now. Ask yourself, why am I not enough to build this business? Just try it right now. <clears throat> Ask yourself that. Why am I not enough to build this business? What happens? I love that you're drinking champagne right now. Um, <laughs> happy birthday. But what happens? How motivated do you feel when you focus on that? Not motivated at all, right? And even when you read all these positive thinking, personal growth books, it doesn't change the fact that you have that voice in your head that says you're not enough. So I shared my limiting questions. Money is bad and I'm not enough a couple of minutes ago, but what are yours? Type yes if you have ever said this to yourself. Why isn't my team growing? Why can't I get it right? Why don't people want to join me? How come I always mess it up? Why is it so hard to lose weight? Why am I so broke? Why is it so much easier for my upline? Why can't I do anything right? Will I always be this stuck? How many of you guys are assholes to yourself like that on a regular basis? It doesn't feel very good, does it? And I bet it leads to a lot of pain, a lot of procrastination. There you are looking at your life so frustrated with the results you're getting. And no matter how much someone tells you they believe in you, it doesn't change the fact that you have that voice in your head that says you're not enough. Do you know what I'm talking about or am I crazy? So when you set a goal, your dominant beliefs determine if that goal comes true. That's what's going to happen. And goal setting is nothing more than trying to create a new reality as opposed to your current reality. That's what goal setting is. The gap between where you are and where you want to be is whether you are looking for red or looking for blue. That's it. And until that language is consistently blue, you're going to find it very hard to achieve your dreams because when you look for red, you don't even notice it. So that voice needs to be empowering or else you're screwed. And so you do this by flooding your mind with it. And you'll, until that language is blue, though, you're going to be stuck. I lived this. So use the example of why isn't my team growing? Try it right now. Why isn't my team growing? What happens when you say that in your mind? Notice you look for an answer. Even if your team is growing, you look for an answer, don't you? That's how insidious negative self-talk is. Something you need to understand is that your entire life can be changed by asking more empowering questions. Your brain is a Google search engine. It will answer whatever you type into that search bar, but unless you type in something blue intentionally, it's automatically gonna type in something red. And when you type in red, you don't notice blue. So what if you intentionally reverse it? If you're going to get an answer anyways, you might as well ask a question that's going to lead to a better life. When you say, why is it so hard to build my team? 
your brain finds all the reasons why it's so tough. So that's what you focus on. So you never find a solution. When you sit down to work, you are literally looking for every reason why you're not capable. So you don't send invites, you refresh your back office and wonder why more people aren't coming to you. You know what I'm talking about? Like I used to do that all the time. And what's crazy is there's amazing people and opportunities and blue that stumble across your life every single day. But because your mindset is focused on why is it so hard, you won't even notice all the incredible opportunities sitting right around you right now. You won't notice that mom in the grocery store checkout line that has high cholesterol whose life you could save with Shakeology. You won't even notice her. You won't even notice that single dad that lives next door that has no idea how he's going to pay for his kid's college education and you have his freedom trapped in your mouth right now. You won't even notice it. So change it up. Ask yourself this. Why is it so easy to build my business? What happens? Don't you look for an answer? Or how about this? If you're brand new, how come it's so easy to hit Emerald by the end of this week? What's your brain do? It goes, oh, it's only two people. Cool. Ask John and Susie, right? You figure it out. You look for the opportunities, the solutions, the people you can reach out to to build your business. Can you imagine if you flood your mind with this every single day? It will change everything. And here's the key. You don't even have to have the answer. You just need to live in a blue question. Because if you know what you want and why you want it, the how will reveal itself. Always remember that. You don't need to know how. You need to know why. And when you know why and what you want, you're going to figure it out. So live in an empowering question because every problem you face is just a question you haven't asked yourself yet. That's it. So your homework coming out of this in 30 minutes for your life and for your business, for all parts, you're going to write down all the negative red stuff you ask yourself on a regular basis. Why am I so fat? Why am I so broke? Why am I not pretty enough? Why don't I know enough people? Those negative questions, and you're going to flip them to their empowering alternative. Instead of why am I so broke? It's why am I so wealthy? Instead of like, why does today suck? It's why am I so grateful for this life, right? That would be an example. You turn it into the empowering alternative. Two questions that changed my whole life. Number one, why am I so kind to myself today? That changed my life big time. And number two, like, by the way, how many of you guys could afford being nicer to yourself on a regular basis? Yeah. Why am I so kind to myself today? That question changed my whole life. Question two, why am I worthy of living an amazing life? That's the question too that I ask myself because life gets 100% easier if you're 1% nicer to yourself, guys. 100% easier. And what you're going to do is you're going to flood your mind with this. Remember, if you have blue primarily in your mind, what do you not see? You don't see red. So you're going to flood your mind with it. My wife probably thought I was crazy because I literally recorded my empowering questions on my phone. And I listened to them while I slept at night. Disclaimer, don't choke yourself with a headphone cord, right? I listened to it while I slept at night. I listened to it while I did the dishes. I listened to it while I did the dog for a walk when I was in the shower. Any opportunity I got, I flooded my mind with blue because I wasn't going to give it a fighting chance to find red. Can you imagine? How many of you guys have kids? Raise your hand if you have kids. Any you guys have kids? Awesome. What would happen if you had an alarm that went off on your phone five minutes before your kids woke up from a nap or got home from school that said... Why is it so easy to be a patient and loving mom today? Like, how would their life change forever from one question? Everything would be different. Their confidence would be affected forever from one question. Or how many of you guys are in a relationship or married? Raise your hand if you're in a relationship or married. Okay, cool. What would happen if you had an empowering question on your phone that said, why is it so easy to fall in love with my spouse again today? How would your relationship change forever? I ask myself that question every day, by the way. And we have a thriving, beautiful relationship full of passion, love, intimacy, everything. It will change your life if you do this, guys. You're planting blue thought seeds and you're watering them daily. You're putting weed killer on this stuff. You let that die in your garden. And now the only thing you water is the blue. Within less time than you think, garden's gorgeous. It's blooming with so many colors. It's giving your life oxygen again. And when your life has oxygen again and you feel alive, guess what happens? Business gets easier, a lot easier because people become magnetized to you. They want to be part of your life. Does that make sense? Is this one mindset strategy helpful? Think you can use this in your life and your business? Rewiring those questions, flooding your mind with it? Awesome. I have two more for you guys. Number two, write this down. Your problem is not the problem. How you face your problem is the problem. What does that mean? 
your problem isn't the problem, how you face your problem is the problem. What that means is when you're so emotionally attached to a goal coming true, you actually push that goal away from you. Now, don't take that to mean that you shouldn't be excited or passionate or happy about goals. You should be. But what I mean is when your happiness is dependent on a goal, you make that goal so much harder to achieve. Type yes if you have ever pushed so hard for a goal and it feels like it's evading you. Every time, two steps forward, two and a quarter steps back. Lose five pounds, gain seven. Don't know why. Or how many of you have achieved these goals and feel hollow and empty inside when you do? You get to two star, now what? You get to success club 10, now what? You don't know why. It's because you're attached instead of committed. You are attached. Your happiness is dependent on a goal. You have a mindset of this must happen and then I can be fulfilled. But every time you get there, there's always a what's next. When you think this way and you come up short, which by the way, you're going to miss some goals, how do you feel? Horrible. Your self-worth takes a hit. Compounding negative self-talk, you start to believe that you're not enough. And when you start to build a business that way or you try to build a business that way, isn't it overwhelming and intense and stressful to try to solve those challenges? It feels defeating like you can't do it because you have no idea how to solve it. But when you can learn to see your challenges just as a blue question you got to ask, instead of being responsible for your happiness, all of a sudden you start solving the problems. And huge important note here, and this is the overarching focus of everything that I teach in my course, Appreciation Academy, that I'll talk to you guys about at the end. Write this in your notes. Business success and money will not bring you happiness unless you're already happy. Business success and money will not cause happiness. And if you think they are, it's like fighting a ghost, isn't it? It doesn't work. How many of you have said, once I achieve this weight, I'll be happy, but you're still not happy. It's bullshit. You have to love where you are right now. If you ever want to achieve that happiness is what creates success. Happiness and appreciation for the journey and the challenge and the struggle is how you overcome the challenge. And the reason for that is because when you start loving it, you stop pushing away the lesson that will get you to where you want to be. I used to say that I should be somewhere else. I should be 10 pounds lighter. I should be at this success club rank or place by now. I should be at this rank. I should be elite. Well, if you're saying you should be somewhere else, then you're saying where you are right now sucks. And if where you are right now sucks, then you're not grateful. You're not appreciating your life as is right now. Why does Sean T always say in his programs, if you want to lose weight, you have to love your body where it is now. Because why would you hate the vehicle that's going to get you to freedom? Why would you hate that? Seeing, like loving where you are is how you finally hear the lesson that will get you to where you want to be. I didn't get that for the longest time. It's why I stayed stuck. You don't need to find the answer because where you are right now is the answer. And when you can love where you're at, you're finally going to learn how to get to where you want to go. Seeing your current good is the fastest way to increase more good. Step into the common sense corner. If you're God, the universe, whatever you believe in, are you going to give more to the person that's complaining about having less? Or are you going to give more to the person that loves everything they already have, including the hardship? Obviously the latter. And what's awesome about this one skill is it means you don't have to work nearly as hard for exponentially better results. It doesn't seem forced anymore because instead of death gripping the steering wheel, slamming down on the brakes, tires spinning, smoke going everywhere, cars flying by you on the highway to success and you're wondering what you're doing wrong, you realize the only thing that's going on is that your emergency brake is on. That's it. You don't need to push down harder on the pedal of success. You need to get out of your own damn way. That's what you need to do. Get out of your own way, release that emergency brake. And when you do that, business gets easier. A lot of people try to climb this big mountain of success saying, I'll be happy when I get to X. How many of you guys have done that? Not if you've done that. I'll be happy when. Put your dream up on top of a mountain for a second. The problem with that is it's the same thing as trying to climb a mountain or go on a hike with a blindfold on. If you've ever gone hiking out west, it's just an easy straight shot to the top, right? No. No, it's twists and turns and ups and downs and peaks and valleys, false summits everywhere, right? That's what happens. So if you have a blindfold on and you take your energize, you're excited to go on the hike, right? But you have that blindfold on, you're going to lose the trail. You're going to trip. You're going to fall. You're going to break an ankle. It's going to take you way longer to get to where you want to be. And even if you happen to get to the top of that mountain, 
because that blindfold's on, you're not going to be able to see any of the beauty around you. This is the coach that hits elite and then goes, is that it? Right? You know who I'm talking about, right? You know that feeling of hollow success. That's what happens if you happen to stumble upon success. It's the perfectionist that achieves their to-do list and still feels empty. That's what happens. So what happens if you take the blindfold off though? What happens if you set the intention at the beginning of this hike to be committed to the mountaintop, committed to getting there, super excited about it, and committed to loving the climb? You're no longer attached to the top, you're committed to the top. And what if you decide to decide to do this for the growth instead of just the outcome? What if you do this for the person you become along the way instead of just the results? If you do that, you decide to love the ups and the downs, the valleys and the peaks. You appreciate the wildlife in the distance. You appreciate the scenery, the weather, all of it. Isn't it so much easier to get to the top? Because you just stay on the trail that life is giving you. You stop making where you are wrong because you're exactly where you need to be. And if your objective from now on is growth and the person you become instead of the outcome, then even if that trail is going downhill, meaning a coach quits, you get a return order, you drop in rank, your volume is less. Even if that happens, if your goal is growth, you still get a positive result, don't you? Because you learn something instead of hate something. And when you learn something, you stay on that trail, you're gonna eventually get to the top. So trust and have faith that where you are right now is exactly where you need to be. You're supposed to be in this spot and life's lessons are going to get louder and louder and louder until you listen. They're going to get louder, right? You're going to keep gaining that weight. You're going to keep on missing that rank until you learn to love your life where it is right now. And once you choose to love your life where it is right now, how does that affect everything? How does that affect your social media posts, your invites? Nothing, nothing feels forced anymore. It flows out of you. It becomes easy when you operate this way. Like your business just grows because people want to be part of your life. Like, you know, that feeling you have in your heart where things are forced. What if that went away? Like right now and you decide to just become alive again. How would your life change? Living this way makes success easier. So like I said, I can't get into the whole system of how to do that in 45 minutes to an hour. That's what my program is for that I'll talk to you guys about at the end. But I can give you one final tip that makes living this way so much easier. Do you guys have time for one more? Okay, cool. So I call this the secret sauce. The secret sauce. You might know this as genuine gratitude. Genuine gratitude. Write this in your notes. Number three, gratitude is the greatest success tool of all time. Write that in your notes. Gratitude is the greatest success tool of all time. Some of you guys just rolled your eyes, didn't you? It's true. Gratitude is a business tool. Gratitude is a marriage tool. Gratitude is a money tool. And I'm going to prove it to you in a minute. And by the way, by gratitude, I don't mean where you complain about things all day long and then write three things in a journal to feel better. That's not gratitude. Okay? If you do that and you actually feel the gratitude in your heart as you do it, wonderful. But if it's just another checklist item just to get through it, you're not actually practicing gratitude. You're just taking up time in your day. So this is the secret sauce. This is the most important skill you can ever master because it's impossible to feel pain if you're grateful. It's impossible. You cannot feel emotional pain if you are grateful. You cannot feel any disempowering emotion that stops your business if you're grateful. It is like, it's like trying to be sad and jumping up and down in the mirror naked. It doesn't work. You can't do both simultaneously. So, but it's got to be real gratitude because remember seeing your current good, looking for blue is the fastest way to increase more good because when you look for blue, what do you not see? You don't see red and wherever focus goes, energy flows. That's what you create opportunities, solutions, like these things that solve your challenges come to you so much faster when you're grateful for the life you already have. So one of the best ways, <coughs> excuse me fighting out a cold. It's coming on pretty strong. But so one of the best ways to feel gratitude is by having some perspective. So think about this. You're watching a video about mindset from anywhere in the world right now, probably on a couch or at a desk or on a bed in a safe apartment or home, 
probably wondering what you're going to have for date night on Friday. You can probably go to the doctor to get treated for medical care. You know, you probably have um, a dog you can take to the vet. You can probably turn on your Apple TV tonight to watch Marie Kondo or Game of Thrones or whatever you're into right now. And most of you will take that for granted. When someone's going to kill themselves today, just take that in for a second. When someone is going to end their own life today, when there's a mother out there who's going to watch her baby starve to death tonight, when there are people out there injecting needles into their arms to cope with pain, when there are countries that live in communism, when two thirds of the world live on $900 a year, $2.50 a day, can you even imagine? We're so accustomed to the miracles happening around us every day that we don't even view them as miracles anymore. We, don't, we view miracles as scarce and don't appreciate how literally everything around us is a miracle. These Sharpies, this microphone, this water bottle, this team is a miracle because it was once an idea this incredible woman had. That's all it was, which proves you can create miracles any second if you want to. We have the tendency to let go of gratitude and make it a rule that we can only feel grateful if the next thing happens. And just like we talked about a minute ago, that's setting you up for suffering. If you can take away one thing from this entire talk, it's the following sentence. Like put this in bold, put in your notes, live it. If you live this, your life will change forever. You ready for this? Nothing has to happen in order for you to be happy. Nothing. And as long as you structure your life in a way where your happiness is dependent on a rank or what someone says or something you, you don't control, you're never going to be fulfilled. This life is a gift. Even if you have success, you could be winning at life and feel like you're losing because the scorecard you're using to measure success is unfair because it only allows you to feel grateful if the next thing happens. An achievement without gratitude is total failure. You're breathing. You're alive. Isn't that enough to smile about? Isn't that enough to love? Isn't that enough to feel fully alive every day? And when you live that way, business gets easier. A lot of you have these high expectations of your spouse, your kids, your team, your volume, your sales. And when your life conditions, mean the way life is right now, doesn't match up with how you think it should be. And you end up shooting all over yourself. What, like we feel horrible, don't we? We get frustrated. We like, we have these rules of what needs to happen before we can be happy. We got to let that go. Gratitude is one of the ways to do that because your view of life determines your future. Think about when you take Shakeology and you put the cup in the sink afterwards and you turn the water, it's mucky, right? It's all nasty. But if you keep that faucet on, eventually the Shakeology leaves the cup and it's clear water, right? That's what's going to happen to your mindset over the course of time by practicing what I'll teach you, the anxiety, the depression the overwhelm, the fear, the negative self-talk, it goes away. I lived it. And you become alive every single day. You're talking to someone right now who knew what he wanted so bad, but I find myself on the couch, like watching TV, wishing my life would change, having every tool I needed to make it happen. I had an amazing leader. I had an amazing team. I had all the, I had the coach basics. I had all of it. I had everything I needed to change my life, but I couldn't get it to happen. And I go through these perfection and guilt loops where I needed to do things perfectly. And if I didn't, I'd feel horrible. Once I felt horrible, I felt guilty. So I would try to be perfect again and it didn't work. And it was like perfection, guilt, perfection, guilt, perfection, guilt to where my laptop was staring at me going, dude, change your life. You know what you need to do. But I couldn't get myself to do it because I just didn't care. But I cared so much. And even worse, not if this makes sense, I wasn't just depressed. I was pissed off at myself that I was depressed. I was pissed off at myself for being less than I was meant to be. I was pissed off at myself for being face to face with mediocrity when I knew in my heart I was meant for more. And from practicing what I'll teach you, I'll talk to you guys about that in a minute, it started to go away. And now, like, no BS, I am this annoyingly happy on a regular basis. Like, actually this annoyingly happy on a regular basis. And guess what flow, flows from that? Business. Because business and success don't create happiness, happiness creates business and success. You have to learn how to be happy. That's where the business comes from. And yes, there are days once in a blue moon where I get the whole woe is me, down, depressed, useless feeling that day. Everyone does. Everyone does but I can get out of it in three minutes instead of it lasting a week or two. Can you imagine how your life would change 
if you could get out of those states in three minutes, I'm about to teach you how. So what I learned, this is what I learned from my mentor, Tony Robbins. Okay. So I do not take credit for this. It's his work, what he taught me, but it's so powerful that I need to share it with you. So for this exercise, get somewhere where you can allow yourself to feel the full spectrum of emotion because tears are going to flow. Okay. Get somewhere where you can allow yourself to feel everything. Like if you know from being around other people, get into a different room. If you know being on video right now around your teammates is going to mean you're not going to play all out, turn your video off. Give yourself this gift because it'll get emotional. It'll get real. Get where you need to be. 10, 15 seconds. I'm going to try not to cough or sneeze during this. And uh, <clears throat> as you're getting where you need to be, think of something in your life that stresses you out really bad. Like on a scale of one to 10, like a seven or higher. What's that stressor for you? Is it unfinished business? Is it a conversation that needs to happen? Is it something that you haven't been able to achieve? What is that stressor for you? And think about that, feel it, and think about how you haven't been able to overcome it. Think about how you're feeling kind of stuck, just don't know where to go. And just for the people still on video, raise your hand if you have your stressor, just so I can see. You guys have your stressor? Okay, awesome. So think about how it's stressing you out. Sit up nice and tall now. Sit up nice and tall, change your state. Sit up nice and tall. Cool. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Another one, a big deep breath in your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And take both your hands, physically put them on your heart for a moment. And as you breathe, breathe deep into your heart. Like actually imagine, just trust me on this, actually imagine the air flowing in your nose, through your heart and back out your mouth. Another big deep breath in through your nose, through your heart, back out your mouth. And notice how your breath has already calmed your mind. And just take a second and feel your heart beating in your chest right now. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day without you having to do anything for it. As long as it beats, you live. It beats even when you sleep. It's the greatest gift you have ever received in your life. You didn't have to buy it. You didn't have to earn it. Something thought enough of you to give you this gift of life the moment you were born. You have inherent worth because this heart is beating in your chest right now. So take a moment and breathe in just deep feelings of gratitude and appreciation and love for this thing beating right now when some people don't have that gift. Take that in. Breathe it deep into your heart. And now go back to a memory you can feel deeply grateful for. What's a moment, a memory, any stage, any time, a beautiful memory from your past? Is it when you said, I do? Is it when you had your first baby? What's that moment for you? But instead of seeing that memory from the outside, step back into that moment like you're there. Relive it. See what you saw then. Feel what you felt then now, like it's happening. All over again, feeling so deeply grateful. And take that memory and breathe that memory deep into your heart right now, feeling so grateful, so happy. And now go to a second memory. What's a second memory you can feel deep feelings of gratitude for? What's that moment for you? Again, same thing, not from the outside, relive it. Step into that moment like you're there, experience it all over again, breathe the same way you did then, see what you saw then, hear what you heard then, feel what you felt then now, feeling so grateful and breathe that gratitude into your heart right now and treasure it and cherish it and love that memory. Know it's within you whenever you want. And now go to a coincidence. What's the coincidence for you that you can be grateful for? We love coincidences because we didn't make it happen. Something happened. We were in line at Starbucks and met the love of our life. We didn't mean to get pregnant. Now you have an amazing family. You got a message on Facebook and your life changed forever. What's that coincidence for you? What did it lead to? Why is your life so beautiful because of that coincidence? Was that actually a coincidence? Or were you being guided? Were you being guided? Because it's so powerful, so beautiful when you realize that life 
is always happening for you and not to you. Even the problems, they're gifts because they lead to a more elevated version of you. So take a second, feeling so grateful for that beautiful coincidence. Take it all in. And now, just like the movies, see these flash before you. Feel the gratitude for your heart beating 100,000 times a day. Feel that, that first memory right in front of you, that second memory right in front of you, that coincidence right in front of you, feeling so grateful. Try to triple the amount of gratitude and appreciation you have for this beautiful gift of life. Take it all in, feeling so grateful. And now just try to spread it in every direction. Imagine it radiating out from your heart in every direction, touching the people you love most. They don't even need to know it. Just send it to them. Just see it radiating in every single direction out from your heart, visualize it, feel it, and feel so grateful for it. And just take all of this and breathe it deep into your heart, feeling so grateful, so alive, so happy. And just say thank you. Just appreciate this amazing gift of life. And take that in for a second, feeling so grateful. And now from this beautiful state, from your heart, not your head, from your heart, go back to that stressful situation you totally forgot about because it's impossible to feel pain when you're grateful. Go back to that stressor and from your heart in this beautiful state, ask your heart to complete the following sentence. In this stressful situation, all I need to remember is blank. In this stressful situation, all I need to do is blank. In this situation, all I need to say is blank. Ask your heart for the answer. Because it knows, doesn't it? It knows what's next for you. It knows that solution. And when you have your answer, or if you found some sort of direction, go ahead and open your eyes, come back on camera. How many of you found that to be very powerful? How many of you felt something so real from that exercise. And if you didn't, do it again when no one else is around. How many of you found direction to a challenging time? By the way, that's who you really are. That's the real you. That's the you that's not dominated by fear. That's the you that can solve any problem in her business whenever she wants to. That's who you are. And you have one shot at this life to live that way. One. Most people, they'll go through life trying to stay safe, never really going for it. You're not that person. You don't control the length of your life, but you do control its depth and its meaning. You were not put here to experience mediocrity. You were meant to feel fully alive every second of every day, and I can actually teach you how. You're exactly where you need to be right now to learn what you need to learn to live the life you're meant to live. When you see it that way, amazing things start to happen for your life. When you make this part of who you are, and when you make this your default setting, game over. Can you imagine how the world would change if this is how you woke up? If this is how you went to bed? If this is how you solve challenges in your marriage, your business, your bank account, everything? How would everything change? What if this was your default setting? What if this could be coached into you so it never went away? So you could wake up this annoyingly happy a couple months from now. Everything would be different, guys. And if that's something that you feel could truly benefit your life, it'd be a privilege just to take two minutes and share about a wonderful opportunity that I have for you guys to learn how to do it. We barely scratched the surface tonight, guys. We talked about what we need to do. I'm about to teach you how to do it. So if you've ever been pushing so hard for a goal, and it seems like it's getting further away, and you have all the trainings, but it still isn't working. Or even if you do achieve success, it feels hollow and empty inside. Or some days you crush it, some days you can't get off the couch, and you sometimes just feel like your own worst enemy and you don't know why. I've created a course, an online mindset course that will break you through all of it. And I mean all of it. There are hundreds and hundreds of Beachbody coaches in this program, created by a former Beachbody coach for people going through what Beachbody coaches struggle with. The reason you feel stuck is inner conflict, guys. That's it. Inner conflict that needs to be resolved. I know this because I live it. Negative self-talk, lack of worth, limiting beliefs, all of those things are keeping you stuck in the same spot. You hear the cliche, change your thinking, change your life. This teaches you how. How to be happy. How to attract success instead of repel it. And because your leader is amazing, we've put a 50% discount on this program for you. 
50% off of this program from what the normal public gets. And that's for a payment plan and full pay option. So if things are tight, it's still possible for you. And by the way, if things are tight, whether it's through me or through someone you trust more, if money is tight or time is tight or you're overwhelmed in life, that's exactly why you must invest in your growth. Because if you keep trying to solve the problems with the same mindsets that created the problems, you're never going to break through ever. And because we don't know each other very well, that's why I've included a 30 day guarantee on this, where if it's not for you, you can get a full refund in those 30 days. So you guys know who Jen Richardson, obviously, right? You guys know who that is? Uh, there are over, I think, 70 of her teammates in this program right now. And she says, and I quote, this is the missing link that every Beachbody coach needs to finally see success in their business. You guys know who Micah Folsom is, double 15 star diamond coach? She says, and I quote, if you're doing all the things and you don't know why you're stuck, or even if you're successful and you feel empty inside, you must do this program. I can go on and on with testimonials. I don't, I'm not here to impress you with them. I'm here to impress upon you the sincerity of this. And it's not about the sale. It's, I think you can tell this is just, it's real. This is what changed my life. It's not a business training. It's not how to use Instagram. It rips away what's underneath, what's stopping you from seeing success with those things. And most importantly, it teaches you how to actually believe in yourself and silence the inner demons that are stopping you from seeing success. And I will not disappear on you. You can even ask Jen that. So just like we talked about, business and success will not create happiness. Happiness creates success. This is how I went from stuck to where I am now, seven years of growth packed together so you can shrink almost a decade into a couple of months. So if you felt something real, guys, if you've been living in a memory that says you're not enough, and if you know that it's something in here or something up here that's stopping you, I know how you feel, I lived it, and in this course, I will show you how to break through, that's a promise. So if this is something you would like to do, head to bradbizjack.com slash team call. Again, bradbizjack.com slash team call. Uh, Jillian's going to share this with you guys on the team page after this and all that. Um, there's a little opt-in form that helps me track where people came from. And then the next page has all the details. But either way, guys, whether you decide to join or not, it's a privilege to serve you. Thank you so much for your time tonight. And I hope to see you in Appreciation Academy. It truly is life-changing. So my friend, I will turn it back to you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for that. That was pretty intense. And I'm really impressed that you talked that fast for an hour. Um, I also just realized that my name is spelled wrong on here. I have a question for you. I don't know if anyone else has questions. Do you ever find that people, I am not as happy as you, but I'm happier than the average person. You're like a whole other level. So do you ever find that people, everyone's laughing at me. Do you ever find that people are really overwhelmed by you? Like, so I work a nine to five with a lot of very introverted people and I actually consider myself an introvert and I am, but I'm by far the least introverted person. I'm in technology. So these people just are like, you know, at a computer all day. And I like, I'm like, Hey, how are you? And literally they look the other way. Like they can't function with me. Do you ever struggle when you're talking about like inviting people and changing your mindset with people that can't handle your happiness because I'm struggling a little bit with your happiness and I'm a pretty happy person myself, just honestly. Absolutely. And I think by prolonged exposure to it, it lifts people up. Okay. So if you, if you walk into a room and someone is like, do you ever have that uncle that is just laughing hysterically about something and you're pissed off? eventually you're going to start laughing with that uncle. You're the annoying uncle. Yeah, I'm the annoying uncle. And so, <laughs> so, like, so what I teach people is to life up everything you do. If you, like, for example, how many of you guys say when someone asks how you are, I'm okay. If you say I'm okay, you're bringing down other people's energy. And the reason for that is not to, and, and what I always tell people to do, and what I'll coach you guys to do in Appreciation Academy is not, it's not about lying about how you're doing. It's about commanding your brain to feel better. If you say to someone, if someone asks how you're doing and you say, you know what, I'm fantastic. And you say that to them, or I'm amazing. And you say it, what you're doing is you're telling your brain to feel fantastic. Just try it right now. Say like, I'm okay. How does it feel? What energy do you feel from it? Not a lot. But if you say, just try it right now, say it again. I'm amazing. What emotions stem differently from that situation. So it's a pattern interrupt. 
So by doing this consistently, it leaks off onto people. A lot of people, when, when they're not, there's nothing, it's not about introversion versus extroversion. It's about the energy that they have and feeling that like they can actually become that happy. And the reality is they can't. Everyone can. 100% guarantee it's simply a belief. Our life is a reflection of our beliefs. That's it. And some people, they might not want to. That's okay. There's no judgment about that, but I teach people how to live that. So, um, so to actually answer your question, in the beginning, of course, people kind of resist it, but over the course of time, like, cause it kind of seems like bullshit right away. Right. But over the course of time, they'll realize it's, it's real and they can be that happy. So long answer, but I hope it helps. No, it does. I'm definitely going to freak lots of people out. If I start going, I'm fantastic. They're going to be like, this girl was crazy before. And now she is a wacko. <laughs> um, but I'll just have to radiate my pause. Posit- I'm totally going to do it tomorrow. I don't go into my office that much, but I'm going in tomorrow. And you better believe anyone who talks to me is going to get like a hands up spirit fingers. I'm fantastic. I got to get it on video. All the, all the people that sit. I need that on video, Jill. <laughs> um, do you guys have any other questions? No, I, I love the enjoy the journey because that's my biggest hurdle is like not like just working, 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 working and not enjoying the working part of it. So that was really helpful for me. I will post everything in the team page. I'll post the recording. I'll post the discounts that Brad gave us. Um, I assume that the pricing's on that thing. I haven't actually looked at it yet. I only looked at the little uh, discount flyer he gave us. So Um, I can attest to the fact that Brad was a very successful coach and has now found his calling doing this, which is awesome for us that he knows our business and also knows now the headspace business. So, um, anything else you guys? Well, thank you, Brad, very, very much for coming tonight. I have to tell you, I don't know if this makes you feel good, but this is the largest attendance we've had in a team call in a long time. Whitney, you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, we had a lot of people super excited for this. So thank you, thank you again. And I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday, guys. I'm fantastic. Bye. (laughs) Bye, guys.